I'm Greg Olick from uh, Metacoustics, E3 Metacoustics, and I would like to explain to you the operation of the Interacoustics PA5 pediatric audiometer. Uh, this is a handheld device. You see the picture there. Uh, I'm holding it in my hand now. Uh, this is the control panel. On the other side is a speaker with some lights in it that flash. Um, and on the bottom of it is where you put the batteries. It's three AA batteries. Uh, you just uh, need a, a screwdriver or a dime or something just to unscrew that and uh, drop in the batteries. So I'm gonna go over uh, basic operation and then we'll talk about how we would uh, test uh, different types of pediatric patients with it. Let me explain the control panel uh, for you and go over the uh, the five controls that are on there. Uh, there are two slide switches. There's one, there's the other one, and uh, the one on the left is used to uh, control the frequency of the stimulus. That's the pitch of the stimulus. And the four frequencies that we typically test are 500 hertz, point k uh, 0.5 k is 500 hertz uh, and then 1 k meaning 1000 hertz 2 k 2000 hertz and 4 k 4000 hertz and this is how you would switch in between frequencies the next control right next to it on the right here it's a slide control as well and that's to control the intensity if that is uh, switches all the way down at the bottom then you shut the instrument off as you raise it up, you'll find different intensity levels starting at 20 dB and then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 dB, okay? Uh, dB means decibels, that's a unit of loudness. And uh, uh, if one has good hearing, they should be able to hear all four of that to those tones, five, one, two, and four, uh, should hear them all uh, at, uh, at 20 dB. The 20 dB is about the loudness of a whisper. Uh, 70 dB is the loudness of conversational speech, right? Uh, then there is this button over here, right there. Uh, and that's the select button where you would select the type of stimulus that you're going to use. And these lights up on the top indicate which stimulus is chosen. It is either a tone, uh, and the tone in this case is um, a warble tone. Uh, that is a pure tone. A pure tone is just one frequency that varies five times a second. It, it varies 5% five, five times a second. Okay. So it sounds like this. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. I'll demonstrate it in a minute. This is a narrow band noise. And the frequency of that noise will change as you change the frequency, just like the tones would change their frequency if once you did that. Narrow band noise is uh, is a, a noise that is centered around uh, the test frequency. Okay, and then there is uh, also a selection of white noise. Now that's broadband noise. Uh, it's not frequency specific. It's not a particular frequency. It is just all frequencies, okay, all audible frequencies. Uh, and then the final control is this stimulus button right there. And uh, that is uh, what you press to actually apply the stimulus. So let me show you. Uh, here I've got the instrument turned on and I've I turned it up to 70 dB so you can hear it. And when I hit the stimulus button, uh, I'll have it on narrow band. You see how um, see how I'm able to switch between a tone and or I can take my and switch to a narrow band. And when I do that, and when I go to white noise. So that's the stimuli that they have. And if I 
if I am applying a tone, I'll select tone. It's 4,000, 3, 2, 1, 500. 500 hertz or 0.5K. So that is basically the controls on the system. There is one button that I didn't tell you about, and the remaining button uh, is one that says light on it. Okay, so what do we mean by light? Well, if you look at the back of the instrument where the speaker is, uh, then I push light, you see I have those flashing lights there. Okay, and that is called visual response audiometry or VRA. And uh, the test that you're doing is a sound field test. You don't have earphones on the patient. You don't have some kind of insert in their ear for testing. You're going to be testing sound field. Uh, and uh, so you can't differentiate the right or left ear, just the general hearing status. And uh, you can do that at those four different frequencies. So uh, why would you have this light array? I'm pushing the final button uh, and the lights are flashing while I hold that button down like that. Why would you do that? Well, depending on the patient's age and uh, uh, cognitive ability, right? Because uh, you, we'd like to do, we call this a behavioral test because the patient has to respond to it. Uh, it's not something that is automated or, yeah, not like ABR, auditory brainstem response, where we're reading the patient's brain waves to determine their hearing status, or even OAE, which is autoacoustic emissions, where we stimulate the cochlea directly uh, and uh, there's an emission. This is a behavioral test. Patient has to respond somehow. So if the patient is old enough, well, then it's going to be pretty easy because you're going to put the level at. You might try something like this. You might try a, if I was trying to determine if they heard this, I'm on 2000 hertz. If, uh, and if I was trying to determine whether they heard that, I might play it pretty loud, 70 or 80 like that. See? and say, when you hear that, okay, when you hear it, I want you to raise your hand, okay? And uh, you could keep on going down, and then when when, it, when you get all the way down to 20, if, if they respond, uh, then they're going to pass that frequency, and you can go on to the next one. Uh, and so that would be a patient that's old enough to respond like that. On a... a a patient that's, say, a toddler, where you just can't say raise the hand, your, your hand when you hear it, uh, then you have to um, uh, use uh, another technique. And that's where the flashing lights come in. Visual response audiometry means that the patient isn't responding by raising their hand uh, because they, they, they can't understand that instruction. Uh, so what you're doing is you're putting this instrument in front of them and you're applying the stimulus and you want them to look towards it they just heard that uh, you know and they think it's an interesting sound and so um, uh, I they they will be able to localize that um, you you want this speaker to be about uh, you know 15 inches 12 you know 12 15, 16, something in that area, let's say 12 to 17 inches uh, from, from the patient. And uh, if, they, if they look towards it, then you reward them with those flashing lights uh, and maybe distract them with something else like a puppet or something so that they're looking away from this and then apply the stimulus again. And if they look towards you, that orientation of VRA, visual response audiometry, uh, they actually will look towards that stimulus and then you reward them with a little light show. Okay, uh, that's what we call visual response audiometry. The response isn't raising your hand, the response is that uh, 
that they looked towards that stimulus. When they were distracted, you, you got them looking somewhere else. But then when, you, when they heard that, they knew they would be getting a light show <laughs> um, if, they, if they looked at it. And um, so audiologists, pediatric audiologists do that all the time, VRA. And then now they have a, a more sophisticated system, an audio, you know, a clinical audiometer with speakers and above the speakers, there is, uh, are maybe a flat screen display and it's got a cartoon that comes up to reward the patient and then they distract the patient to be looking the other way and then play the stimulus. And if they look towards it, then uh, and you, you start out at a higher level and you want to see if, how low they will respond. Uh, and so it's going to take some uh, practice on that kind of patient to be able to do this. Um, naturally, if you have an old enough patient where you can instruct them, raise your hand when you hear it, then, then that's great too. And you don't want them to see you to know when you're applying the stimulus. You don't want them to know that. Uh, they, they need to be uh, you want to be in front of them, but in other words, they, you can't see me when I'm pushing that. And he's going to raise his hand like now when he hears it and then put it down. Raise it again and put it down. OK, uh, as I say, a toddler isn't going to be able to do that. And so you have this light show to kind of reward them from looking towards you. And then you have to distract them away from you. Apply the stimulus again. If they turn to look at it when they heard it, then reward them with the lights again. Uh, and you're playing a little game like that. OK, visual response audiometry. So to review what we have, uh, we have the frequency control switch. And we're going to test four frequencies, even though there's five on there, we're going to test 0.5, uh, 1, 2, and 4 kilohertz. And uh, on this uh, control over here, uh, it's a slide switch on the right. Uh, then that's the intensity. Uh, and again, you may start at a higher intensity uh, and then come down. And the lowest place where they respond to it would be considered their, their threshold. Uh, you know, with... Uh, a patient that's old enough, you could just go, just do it at a high enough level so they know what it hear, what it sounds like, and then you can uh, ask them to respond down at uh, 20. Uh, 20 is uh, uh, in every screening in the United States. Uh, if if they can hear it 20, then then they're considered uh, passing. Uh, the select button, as I said, was to switch this select button right here. Is, uh, is to switch in between a tone, a narrow band, or a uh, broadband noise. When would you use narrow band? Well, narrow band, they might respond better to narrow band. You'll use those instead of the tones because the narrow band of noise will change for frequency and, and, and level, and you would use narrow band instead. Uh, however, the, the narrow band is a little bit lower, so you can let them pass. It, it says minus 10 under it, so you can let them pass at 30. Uh, narrow band is uh, just a, a, an alternate stimulus that sometimes pediatric patients uh, respond to better than tones. Okay. Uh, the white noise would be a very, very basic screening, a very, very basic screening where, uh, you know, you just want to see what's their basic hearing level, but you won't know different frequencies. Uh, which is ideal, frequency specific, all you'll have is, well, uh, in the range of speech, they hear, they can hear at 20 or, or 30, 40, 50, 60, no matter what it is. Uh, remember, it's 20 passes, 30, uh, no, any more than that, uh, they're really going to be, for, uh, have to be referred to a pediatric audiologist. Um, of course, this is the one to give them that light reward, uh, those flashing lights on it. If you're doing that visual response audiometry, and then of course this is the one you will press to uh, apply, actually present the stimulus. So hopefully that has helped. It's going to take some practice uh, with pediatric patients. It would be, at, it, and the best thing to do is test adults first. Right? Uh, um, you can 
You could even do this on yourself. Uh, remember that the distance from the speaker to the patient, uh, and you can be right in front of the patient with it, uh, needs to be somewhere between 12 and 16 inches away from it. Uh, if you have a sound level meter app on your phone, which I do, uh, you can actually measure the intensity of the output. Uh, and I, you would typically do that at a loud level like 70, and you would see how far you had to be to be 70. Um, and the owner's manual uh, is in there. You can always uh, refer to that, and uh, uh, that will indicate the distance too. So I hope that has helped. In fact, the system, the, the unit actually says uh, distance on it, and it says 50 centimeters, which is a, about 18 inches. So, uh, all right. Well, I hope that has helped. Um, and uh, and, and as I say, you just have to get your hands on that and, uh, and, and work with it. Uh, it always takes practice. This is a, a, a technique sensitive thing, hearing testing. So it'll take some practice. Practice with um, adults first and then maybe a younger children who can raise their hand uh, before you start experimenting with uh, toddlers where you have to use that uh, the VRA, visual response uh, audiometry routine. Uh, because that's that's tougher. Uh, that's usually done. Uh, it's done every day by pediatric audiologists, but you're doing it in a, a screening fashion with this instrument. Anyway, uh, I hope that helps, and uh, good luck with everything. If you need anything from us, you can always call uh, E3 Medacoustics, and uh, and and we'll help you out.